Okay, I wanted to talk about how real estate will definitely affect, uh, be affected by COVID. So um, this is the stock market here, and you can see that this is over the last five years. This is the Dow Jones, and it's gone all the way up and then came back down. So we're not quite at the five-year lows here. But in terms of real estate, this is just a quick panic sell when COVID hit. Everyone thought the whole world was going to end, and they just sold all their stock. But there's a bigger thing that's happening here. There's also a lot of people who need their IRAs and need their money that they have, just kind of extra money, investment money that might be sitting in some stocks, might be sitting in your IRAs, 401ks, things like that. And this is a good time for people to pull out some of that money and use it for monthly expenses that are kind of drying up right now. No one has any income. So the first immediate answer to this is the government's going to print a bunch of money and give it to everybody so that we don't have another 2008 crisis in real estate. Real estate isn't this quick. If everybody can sell their home with a quick click of a button, we might have seen a whole bunch of real estate sales and a down market already in just a month or two. But the fact is it takes a long time to lose your house. It doesn't take that long to lose the price in your stock here. But if you come to Google and type in, will COVID impact real estate? There's a lot of information already coming out, you know, March 2020, 2020. So six days ago, people are talking about this. People are wondering how it's going to be affected. So right now, the government has basically put a band-aid on the real estate market. They have given everybody enough money in stimuluses and with unemployment to afford another month or two of their mortgage. And then after the month or two, let's pull up a calendar here. Go through a quick story of what I think is actually going to happen to real estate. So right here in April, we've gone through a couple of months in 2020 and we're in April right now and we're definitely affected the stock market showed a panic sell so everybody's scared the government is put a, putting a band-aid on it by handing everybody a bunch of money so that they can afford a couple more months worth of expenses before they possibly lose their house but again losing a house is a lot more of a process than that so if you look into may and june right here in the next couple of months and a lot of people might not get their unemployment checks they might not be approved and they can't get a hold of the unemployment office and they just get to the point where the banks will automatically send out a letter of notification that you are defaulting on your mortgage. So it's not really a personal thing where they pick up the phone and say, hey, Joe, you know, really sorry, you know, can you wait one more month? No, this is an automated message that's sent to you that says you are going to be foreclosed on if you don't pay within maybe 90 days, something like that. Um, so you go out another three months down to, you know, September 2020. So six months before the real estate market is going to start really being affected. And what happens during these next three or four months during the end of this year is people are going to be to the point of, I need to sell this house. Some people have equity in their house, but they don't have the monthly income to pay for the mortgage. So they need to sell their house just to get the equity out. And they're not getting a home equity loan right now in this tough market. So they're going to have to sell their house to get any of that equity, which means an influx of sales will be put on the market here in the last quarter of 2020. Either people are forced to forced into foreclosure. We see short sales where they sell it for less than what they owe on the mortgage and then they end up um, working it out with the bank afterwards. Uh, foreclosures where the bank directly foreclosed on you and you're forced to sell and the bank owns the property at that point. So you're already out of the house. The bank owns it and they sell it on their own and try to recoup what they what they've lost. So we're not going to actually see an effect in the stock market in, in the real estate market until the end of this year, at least. So people are going to also pull out of their IRA. So the stock market is going to take a bigger hit. If you can pull five or $10,000 out of your 401k or IRA and save yourself during these next few months, then that's going to be just a necessity that you have to do. It's better than being foreclosed on. It's better than going bankrupt, even though this COVID situation isn't your fault. Um, but then you saved yourself for a few more months. So then how many people in the world are saving themselves at least, you know, three, four, five more months. So then into 2021, we're going to start seeing even a bigger influx of possible sales. And when the sales happen, remember that the real estate market doesn't just go down because people are willing to pay less. The real estate market can go down because if 150 people in your town post a house for sale for 200,000, every one of them is going to want to go down to 199 and then a lot of them will go down to 198 until someone says okay 190 180 170 just to be the first one to sell or the lowest price because at that point when you're listed for 200,000 no one even sees 
your um, house anymore. It's not even close to the sales price. So this is a very long process in real estate. Like I said, it's not that quick in the stock market. When you look at this whole stock situation here, this right here, everybody got scared, petrified. It's going to go down. A lot of investor pu investors pulled their money out just so that they could put it back in down here. And sure, maybe they were completely lucky, but if they had decided to do that any time around here, they would have missed all of this upswing along here. And uh, there's a lot of different things, but th there's no way too many people timed it exactly perfectly to then buy it again right here and time this perfectly because everyone's in fear of it going even further down. So people buy it back here and now they've made a little bit of profit, but it might even go back down because now people are going to, in the next three months, seriously have to pull their money out. It's, it's not a choice anymore. Sure, it's a bad decision at this point to pull out be because you have to, but because you don't want to, of course you don't want to. Sure, I'd love to leave $20,000 in my IRA and just leave it in the stock market and just hope that it's going to come back or know that the economy will come back eventually. But still, some people need that money right now. So they're going to be forced to pull it out. And when you have an influx of people forced to pull their IRA out, you, you see a downward chart here. It's not like everyone just pulled out, everyone just has an extra 20 grand sitting around and oh great, now I'm just going to buy it all back with my extra 20 grand and wait until it goes up and you just see dollar signs and dollar bills flying all over this person. It's just not the way it is. You create these little ideas of what people have done in your head, your mind. You tell a story that, oh, someone could have bought it here and they could have bought it here and if they sold it here, it, oh, it would have been so glorious and yeah, of course, great, you can have a little story in your head, but come on. That's not the reality. The reality is a lot of people lost some money here. They don't know exactly what to do. Some of them are still maybe panic selling here because it could go back to here. So people have a big psychology in this. <laughs> but real estate is much longer term. Like I was showing you with the calendar, it takes a lot longer for the actual hits to hit real estate, for people to pull out their IRA, use it to save themselves a few more months. So we're not gonna see a big hit in real estate until 2021. But you're going to start seeing some trickles of it toward the end of this year. But uh, the fact of the matter is banks are not foreclosing on people right now. They're forgiving loans. They're trying to save it from collapsing completely because if they foreclose on everyone, they saw what happened in 2008. So that's not their goal. They don't want to do that. But still, you owe them money and they want their money back. So it doesn't matter how you both signed the contract in the first place. Everybody agreed to it. And here we are. So... Um, everyone's going to have to make some choices and hopefully it recoups a little bit better than 2008, but we are certainly going to have some sort of financial crisis here uh, in real estate because there's no way that every single person in America is going to be able to hold on to their homes. The government has already proved that with printing all that money and giving it to everyone, they know immediately that people are going to lose their homes and they don't want that to happen because it's going to cause another crisis. And um, so that's the band-aid for now so in three months we're gonna to have to print another band-aid and in three months we're gonna to have to print another band-aid because people just are not working right now so in three months they're not gonna have we're not seeing any signs of going back to work so of course the real estate of course the stock market everything is gonna be affected by this almost every individual and every company is draining their savings right now if you even had a savings to begin with if you didn't have a savings you're, you're dying for help from the government immediately or else you're gonna be foreclosed on and it's only a matter of time before people's and companies' savings accounts start dwindling and dwindling and dwindling to the fact where they need to start pulling money from other places too and they need to sell a home or sell a stock and push the market even further down. So uh, it's going to take a while to come back. There's no way we're just going to see the end of this. If you think about what the COVID is doing to people right now and how much money everyone and, and time people are putting into the COVID, companies are shut down to um, make these masks for them and stuff. and Great, you know, everyone is doing great, but in terms of this video, in terms of how it's affecting real estate, you can see that production is down, people have less money, they're holding on to every penny, they're not spending as much, and um, we're gonna see the effects of it in real estate and in the stock market and in our savings accounts. Companies and people alike, everyone's gonna see it. It's gonna be a big hit. So uh, prepare for it, do the best you can. Uh, save those pennies, don't spend that much and you know only the necessities because it will last longer the longer you can make your your savings last and the longer you can keep everything and hold 
your investments, the better off you'll be because this is what happens. You have a big dip right here and there was a panic right here. Oh my God, what's going on? Is the whole world ending right here? Oh wait, nope, 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 nope. It just ended up fine. Oh, another one. Oh my God, but it ended up fine. The biggest problem is when people need to actually take that money out. When everyone's just playing around with these dips, these daily dips, you don't need to take your money out. You're just buying in, buying out, buying in, selling out, blah, 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 all the way. But when you have these big dips, it's when people need that money. And that's what we're going to see here. People really need their money and um, they're going to need it out of real estate too. The only way to get it out of your house is to pretty much sell it. So um, lower prices, that's just the way it is. Sorry, but that's the truth. Thank you.